In last week's episode of Soccer Dreams, seven players were selected to go to the House of Champions. They'll compete with 29 other players for a single spot on the Everton Football Club Youth Academy. Uh, I think I'm number one. This week, Soccer Dreams travels to Calgary. Santiago, remember the name. Europe's not ready for me. His first and only female competitor. Probably beat most of these guys. <laughs> with only 29 spaces left to fill, who will be selected this week on Soccer Dreams and who will be the one to go to Everton? I'm the chosen one. We will be traveling across North America in search of the best teenage soccer players. They'll be picked in order to compete for a single position at the Everton Youth Academy. This is their chance to go pro and earn a six-figure contract. Only one of these skilled athletes will survive the final cut, but most of them will endure the frustration of failure. How many of you would scratch people's eyes out and take everything to be a footballer? You have to live it. You have to breathe it. It's got to envelop you. If that's my life, it has to be your life. Get on the ball! Our talented soccer experts are Steve Niger, Jason Messa, Bassam Name, Hubert Busby, and Ray Hall, manager of the Everton Youth Academy. It doesn't matter how good you think you are. It only matters how good we think you are. This is the dream. I'm coming to see if we can find the place. Are you the one? Known for its beautiful landscape, world-famous stampede, and abundance of oil, Calgary is once again a boom town. But what most people don't know is that it's also a soccer town. The chance of playing soccer professionally is a dream for many kids, and the prospect of playing for a premiership team like Everton has generated a buzz amongst the players not only here in Calgary, but all over the prairies as well. Take Kayla, for example, who traveled all the way from Saskatchewan just to compete here today. Well, right now I'm the only girl here today representing my community. People say it's just a game, but it's more than just a game. It's, it's more like a life. My name is Charlie Bolu. I am uh, play center back and center mid. I'm number 623. Um, I've been to Europe twice, played there. I've been training there. I'm number one. How old are you? 13. You're 13. Wow, I'm impressed. What makes you want to come out here and play with the big boys? Well, to, uh, to play for a professional soccer team like Everton is amazing. Uh -huh. And for all my hard work to pay off. Yeah. Uh, drills are actually pretty easy. It's just the pressure that's going to kill you. I think I can make it to Everton. It's just uh, getting through the rest of the people in Canada to make it. While the coaches and crew prepare for another day of judging, the players take the opportunity to show off their skills. Here, Steven Iwashko displays his impressive ball control while others look on. Hey, I'm Steven Iwashko. I know I'm the one. Soy numero uno. Trash talking and showboating are some of the tricks that the players use to intimidate one another. No question, man, I can beat this guy any day, any time. Really? Yeah. Make no mistake, there's plenty of talent here today, and the competition is fierce. In order for players to be considered good enough for the House of Champions, they must first make it through the initial round of eliminations. In order to do that, they must demonstrate the baseline skills required by every professional soccer player. By designing drills that show off the player's accuracy, agility, ball control, and stamina, uh, tired. the coaches have developed a point system to rate the best of the best. The process of elimination is very simple. The players with the highest scores move on to more intensive evaluation and a second round of eliminations. From there, only those who display the most talent and promise will have the honour of being selected to the House of Champions, bringing them one step closer to Everton. The first drill the players face is the left and right passing challenge. This drill requires dexterity and accuracy to perform properly. The more balls the player gets into the nets, the more points they will receive. But time is also a factor, so the fastest and most accurate players will be rewarded with the most points. I feel pretty awkward with all the guys watching me when I'm doing my skills and stuff. 
The deals are pretty great. Great opportunity for young people to feel like what it's like to be a professional. The next drill the players must contend with is the agility run. This drill tests the player's ability to start, stop, and cut corners quickly. But more importantly, it tests the player's memory and ability to take direction. Getting mixed up on the turns will not only cost the players time, it will demonstrate to the coaches a lack of concentration. These drills are not too tough, but they're still pretty good. If you can't do them, I guess you're not the one, so you do them or you go home. Well, they seem easy at first once you get into them. You like, it gets nerve-wracking and stuff. It's so quiet that it like, just gets to you. I like these drills because I get to show the world what I can do with the sport I love. The third drill of the day is an exercise in ball control. The players must race against the clock while cutting sharp turns. The trick to this drill is subtlety. A soft touch and discipline go a long way. Drills are good, you gotta step up and show what you got. You're here for a reason. When you see the guy in front of you, he doesn't do as well. It gets to your stomach, butterflies. The last drill of the day combines long range passing and scoring accuracy. The players are given a limited number of chances to pass and score, alternating with each foot. Players will also have to face a goalie. This gives competing goalies a chance to show the coaches what they can bring to the game. With only a limited number of spots available for goalies at the House of Champions, every shot counts. Here the competition is as pure as it can get. No excuses, just one player's skill against another's. While the competition during the shootout was stiff, one player in particular caught the coach's attention. My name is Jordan Unreiner. I'm number 618. I play goalkeeper. And uh, I think I'm number one. At 17 years old, Jordan's height, athleticism, field presence, and charisma make him stand out from the crowd. After a rocky start, Jordan found his groove and shut out virtually every player he was pitted against. Now that the drills are completed, the coaches will tally all the scores and commence the first round elimination. Oh my god. Coming up next on Soccer Dreams, injuries continue to plague the players. I've been in worse places. The first round of cuts, and the coaches make some tough decisions. this website you can discover how Everton train players for the Premier League. Watch the clips and follow the same coaching sessions either as a coach or develop as a player. EvertonWay.com I think I'm the one, I'm definitely the one because I got speed, I got endurance, I got ball controlling and uh, I'm, I think I know I'll make it for sure. Uh, my name is Josh McKenzie, I'm number 624. I've trained with major leagues, I can, I recover really fast from injuries. I really enjoy the game, I love soccer and I want to play professional. And I know I'm the, I'm the one. It doesn't matter how good you think you are. It only matters how good we think you are. This is the dream. I'm coming to see if we can find the play. Are you the one? So far today, we've seen the players compete in a multitude of drills. The left and right foot passing challenge, the agility run, the ball control course, and the long range pass culminating with the shootout. These drills have given the players a chance to prove to the coaches that they have what it takes to move on to the next round. Oh yeah, I'm number one. This first round of elimination is structured on accumulated points based on performance. Intangible factors such as teamwork and leadership are not considered in this round. There's no need for the coaches to deliberate. If the players didn't perform, they don't move on. Simple as that. But what happens when a player has performed, but can't move on? Injuries are a harsh reality to the world of sports, and soccer is no exception. So what happened? Um, I was doing that drill, shooting drill, and kind of like fell on my ankle and just twisted it. I was like, Pretty happy playing, and I thought I could make it. I th thought I was doing pretty good. I just messed up. I don't know. I think I messed up. Too much pressure. I was nervous, I guess. As it turns out, Samuel's score was good enough to qualify him for the second round of competition. 
But even the thrill of learning this news wasn't enough to heal Samuel's injury. But I can tell you one thing, he can make a comeback. We're going to be here next year, all right? We just got to keep working hard and don't put your head down. Now is when you have to improve as a player, as a person, and now is when you got to become stronger. All right? Wish you all the best, son. All right? Okay. Here, let me walk through over here. Unfortunately for Samuel, Everton would have to wait one more year. Now that the player scores have been calculated, the only thing left to do is to let them know who will be competing for a room in the House of Champions and who will be sent home packing. As anxious parents look on, individual numbers are called out. Those whose numbers are called are asked to form two separate groups. One made up of those who qualified and the other of those who will be eliminated. 645. 642, Until coach Steve Niger tells them, the players don't know which of the two groups they currently belong to. Gentlemen, before to tell you this, but you guys are not me. You guys are through to the next round. <laughs> While some players celebrate, others have to deal with the harsh reality of being cut. But despite being eliminated in the first round, Kayla remained positive and was thankful for the opportunity to compete. We just all love soccer because it's just something to do, something to keep us busy away from drugs and alcohol, and, uh, keep our mind off the streets and into something more positive. Kayla was just one of the seven players Shirley Antoine drove for almost eight hours so they could compete in today's Soccer Dreams tryouts. I've been involved with our community sports program for approximately 14 years. Mm -hmm. And with us, we, uh, we fundraise through bottle drives and all that just to keep it To me, it's, I find it's a chance of a lifetime for some of the kids that have dreams of wanting to be soccer players. While most of the Cree Nation players were cut within the first round, there are still two players vying for a room in the House of Champions. Good training, uh -huh. good experience. I love it. And yeah, what makes you come here all the way from Saskatchewan? Representing everyone? Oh yeah. Oh, come on man, that's not how you represent. Represent. I'm yeah. representing all my people from, from Palmaker. All the, they sent me here, they, they thought I could do it. So I guess here I am. Are you the one? For those who are moving on to the next round, the celebration is sweet but short-lived. It's not long before they're back on the field for round two. Small sided games gives the evaluators the opportunity to judge a player's performance in a game situation. Typically, the coaches look for players who are cool under pressure and work well both within a team and stand out individually at the same time. Technically, they look for how fast a player can turn on the ball, his vision on the field, and most importantly, the ability to take on a leadership role. After being split into three separate teams, the players start off eager to impress. Initially, the games are sloppy and rife with mental errors. But for what they lack in cohesiveness, they more than make up for with their ingenuity and heart. Speaking of heart, as you can see, 13-year-old Vito is still in the running for the House of Champions. His fearlessness when attacking the ball has the coaches pleasantly surprised. Once the players have become comfortable with each other, it's not long before they're analyzing their opponents and sharing strategies. Not all the defense has to go move back, you know what I mean? Like, I mean uh, no, yeah, two guys back, one, yeah. one low midfielder and a guy up high. Cover. Yeah, we need two overlaps yeah. all the way. If one defender takes an overlap, a midfielder come back to cover the, de uh, the defense spot. Yeah, exactly. As the day stretches on, the parents open up about their children and give us an understanding of the type of dedication it takes in a player's part to be able to compete at such a high level. Uh, Hassan, he's born here in Calgary. He's been playing soccer since he was four and a half years old, all year round. He's a pretty good soccer player. It's in his blood. You can see on Hassan, he's, he looks like a soccer player. And I'm so proud of him, of course. All those years, it's paid off pretty good. And my son is Steven Iwashko. He's uh, believed in this since he was a baby almost. He's a boy that's uh, slept with a soccer ball when he was small instead of using a, uh, uh, any kind of a toy that was his friend. So uh, it's been his friend all, all this time and uh, he takes it very seriously. My name is Joe Paletto. My son's uh, Vito Paletto, the little guy out there, the youngest one out there. 
he's the youngest, but I think he's he's keeping up with the big 19-year-olds that are, you know, four or five years older than him. So, my name is Lisa. My son is Charlie Beaulieu. He's uh, here, hoping to be a part of bigger, bigger things. After an exhausting day of complex drills and intense side games, the coaches have each come up with a short list of the best players. Are you the one? Coming up next on Soccer Dreams, parting words from coach Steve Niger and the first round of elimination. 6.30. Who among these players will be selected to move on to the House of Champions? My name's Dante Anderson, I'm number 601, and the drills are pretty fun, they're tough. I'm the one because I'll play hard and uh, play with my heart. Yo, what's up? Check one, two. Yo, dog. My name is Samuel Joseph Coffey. I'm an outside midfielder, and I hope I'm the one. My name's Evan Pivnik, I'm number 615, I'm a goaltender. Working hard, that's all. It doesn't matter how good you think you are, it only matters how good we think you are. This is the dream. I'm coming to see if we can find the place. Are you the one? It's been a long day. We've seen the players compete in a multitude of drills, often pushing themselves to the limit and beyond. After the first round elimination, the remaining players competed in a series of side games designed to showcase their teamwork and playmaking abilities. Now that the coaches have made their choices and confirmed their assessment, they're ready to select seven more players to the House of Champions. Coach Steve Niger explains to the players the methodology of the selection process. The players are brought together in groups of five. Of those five, only one or two will be selected to the House of Champions. From there, they will compete against other national selectees for the chance to go to Everton. There's a tension in the air when Coach Jason Messer reads the numbers aloud and kickstarts the second and final round of elimination. 6.11, 6.30, and 6.02. And the first player to be selected today to the House of Champions is... Number 6.30, Biniam Abraha. And 615. The second group of players has two goalkeepers in number 617 Justin Amar and number 615 Kevin Pittman. While spots for all players are limited, spaces for goalies are even tighter. But perhaps one of these two boys will secure one of those coveted spots. The next player to be selected to the House of Champions is number 605 Stephen Iwashko. Stephen's confidence and quick feet caught everyone's attention early on in the day and he was a unanimous choice amongst all the coaches. Can I get numbers 621, 610, 603, 633, and 620? The third player to be selected to the House of Champions is... Number 610, Hassan Nassar. Hassan impressed the coaches with his awareness, tenacity, and classic soccer-style haircut. Can I get 619, 631, 608, 623. This next group has been the most difficult to date. The coaches were impressed with Charlie's experience, decision-making, and athleticism. But something kept drawing the coaches back to 13-year-old Vito Paletto. Coach Steve Niger knew that with the right training, Vito could be just the type of player that Ray Hall is looking for. But Charlie Broglie has already played in Europe and could adjust to Everton's style of play quite nicely. Okay guys, one thing I would love to give this young man a round of applause from everybody. You know what? He deserves it. Before I give our decision, by the way, this decision is made by everybody, if, if you guys want to learn about heart, passion, and hard work, 
All you gotta do is think about him. And I'm not joking, he's only 13. He's come a long way today. And you know what? You won my respect over. And you keep going, you keep working hard. That's what it's all about. Because today, I hate to say it, we're not gonna put you guys through. 623, congratulations. Thank you through. The fifth player selected was a Cinderella story. After an eight hour drive and day long competition, number 643, Mario Tutsis, was rewarded with a trip to the House of Champions, along with the sixth player selected, number 618 goalkeeper Jordan Unrenner, whose poise gained him popularity among the coaches. And finally, after some discussion, the coaches decide on one last selectee for the House of Champions. Coach Steve Niger felt that number 603, Kaylin Lavery, deserved a second look, making him the seventh and last player today to move on. Are you the one? And there you have it. Seven more players are moving on to the House of Champions. There are now 14 players selected to the House, and with another 22 still yet to be chosen, there's plenty more soccer dreams to be fulfilled. Join us next week as the road to Everton continues. They say you live once, so I live once to the fullest. Respect the game, respect the name. A day to the free block, I'm giving them pain. I was king of the streets until they put me in chains. I got the heart of the game, to hum a boss of the game. I did my time in the game, yeah, I'm ready to die. Got my fan for the streets, a lot of pain in my mind. Nobody can stop that, I did the rack. If you're ready to die, you hear the sound of the Mac. Nobody can stop that, I did the direct. If they're ready to die, you hear the sound of the Mac. Train the day to sequel, money's the root of evil Dying is guaranteed to I live my life for free Lord, I came from the ghetto, evil murder with metal If you heard it together, you see the reason my mental Going through pain, if you insane, then we the same Right aside of the time, this dark, it's only rain I was born a poor